friends, welcome to Wellspring Wednesday Chapel service. Once again, I'm in my home, in my living room, and I welcome you here today, and we light the chalice. If you have one at home, please light yours with me. And um, we light it with the words we use every Wednesday, which is this. We light the chalice as a symbol of our faith, the light of truth, and the warmth of love. So each time we have Wellspring Wednesday Chapel, we do something called Joys and Sorrows, and usually we have a scale, and we put joys on one side and sorrows on the other. This week, some of you may know, I put out a call for your joys and sorrows that I could speak in chapel on your behalf. And of course, you can speak them in your living room or wherever you are as well. Um, but as we do together today, I put out this call, and what I heard back from many of you was that things were not just a joy, not just a sorrow. In fact, sometimes they were all different emotions altogether, and um, that they were often mixed up altogether, as they always are. And because our new worship theme this month is thresholds, where I think emotions get especially mixed up, I thought we would do joys and sorrows without the scale today. And with a couple of different colors of stones. Normally we have blue and yellow stones, blue for the sorrows and um, yellow for the joys. Today we're gonna have different colored stones and I'm gonna share with you some of the things that people sent in to me and I'm going to invite you to put your um, chapel service on pause to share anything you wish to share with others who might be with you. So. I begin with um, a sorrow of my own, which is just that I'm really missing my mother-in-law and we haven't been able to see her for a long time. She's 89 and will be turning 90 in two weeks. And so I'm really missing being able to see her. So that is a sorrow. And the joy that accompanies it is that she is still well. And so that is definitely a joy. Some of the joys from others who sent them in. Julie sent this, and I'm actually going to read it so that it's her words, not mine. She says, my 81-year-old mother-in-law lives at an assisted living apartment nearby and cannot even see her son, my husband, entering end-stage cancer. I can only imagine the longing and how isolated and helpless she must feel. She was certain that she was not technically capable of making use of Zoom, but a sweet staffer downloaded the app on her tablet, practiced with her, and wrote down the steps. Now she can actually see her son when they are talking on her phone, which makes her cry, but also makes her happy. So that is both a joy and a sorrow for which I place this green stone and a blue one and a yellow one. Here is a joy from Katrina Nichols. The pace of my life has slowed and simplified. More of my thoughts are focused on what's here right now. And there's more time to observe spring unfolding. So I place a yellow stone for that joy. And here is one, a joy and a sorrow from Becky Gonzalez Conklin. Travel restrictions caused by COVID-19 have forced my daughter and her fiancé to remain in Australia, to be married next weekend there instead of coming to the U.S. as originally planned. So the sorrow of not being with them mixed with the joy that they are getting married, we place some more stones here. Joys, sorrows, and that mixture. And this joy comes from Pam Sheen. Being part of a generous and flexible work family, she says. And 
So we will place that as a joy. And I also place different colored stones for all the emotions of your experience today, which we know is so varied depending on our circumstances and the way they're changing minute by minute sometimes. So as I have done this, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I'm going to very lightly tilt this. We have the shape of a heart in these multicolored stones. If you wish to put this on pause and share a joy, a sorrow, or any other feeling with those who are with, please do that now. So, our story today is in honor of this threshold time where it seems like the joys, the sorrows, the good and the bad, it all gets so mixed up, which is very typical of threshold time. Our theme being thresholds, a threshold, let's just clarify, is that doorway, that passage between what is here and what is yet to come between past and future, between you and me, between inside and outside. And we know as we shelter at home that what's happening inside our homes is often a lot more than it used to be. And inside and outside are all mixed up. This is very typical of what we call threshold times, those times when we are in between, when we are moving from one thing to the next, which is, of course, every day. But it is so apparent whenever our lives go through dramatic change. And at this particular moment in the pandemic, our whole world is going through significant change. And so this is a very brief story that comes from China. And it's the story of a farmer who had some bad luck, some good luck, or maybe what we might just call luck. There was once a farmer who was living on her land with her son. They were very busy farming, the two of them, when one day, and they had one horse, and one day that one horse that they had ran off, not to be seen. And the neighbors all gathered around, and the neighbors came to them and said, oh, what terrible luck. We're so sorry that your horse has run off. And the farmer, Though she was disappointed, her heart horse had run off, she said, we'll see. Maybe it's bad news, maybe not. We'll see. The next day, the horse returned, and the horse returned with seven wild horses coming with it. So the farmer now had this large stable of horses. And her neighbors gathered around and said, oh, what good luck. What good fortune. And she said, maybe, we'll see. The next day, her son was riding one of the wild horses, trying to break it in. And the wild horse bucked her son off of it. He fell and broke his leg badly. He would be laid up for a very long time. And the neighbors gathered around and said, oh, we're so sorry. What Terrible bad luck. And guess what the farmer said? She said, maybe, we'll see. The day after that, as her son was laid up with his leg all set for healing, the country went to war and all of the young men were conscript conscripted to war. And her son, of course, couldn't go off to war as the neighbor's sons did. And the neighbors came over and said, oh, what good luck you have today. And she said, maybe, we'll see. The story could go on and on, we know. And it does, as each of our stories do. But what we learn from the story is that every day is a threshold day that brings changes that we might look at and say, oh, this is very, very bad, or oh, this is very, very good. And yet, if we can hold that open, letting ourselves feel sorrow for the things that are bad, but 
also knowing that they might not always be so. There might be something else that comes from them as well. One of the things we learn from people as threshold skills is that it's really helpful to name and feel our emotions on the threshold. Whether it's sorrow or joy or despair or great hope, whether it's anger, any of these things can rise up and they will when we live through great change. But when we name those feelings and let ourselves feel them, we can then let them move on. Because emotions, of course, if you look at the word, emotion, it is meant to move. It is meant not only to move us, but to move through us, to make an opening for some new emotion to come. They are meant to flow and to keep flowing. And as they do, they keep the story open. For each of us is in a story that is only partly told on every day. And we are connected to stories that began long before and will continue long after. So this is our threshold story for today. We're going to sing just one song today, and this is a song that I'm going to ask my husband to play guitar with. But before he comes in and we start singing it, I want to share some context on this song. I would guess that many, if not most of you, are familiar with this song. Um, the song is Kumbaya. It's been sung around a lot of campfires, but when we trace back its origins, we know that it rose from the African-American spirituals. And what we know about African-American spirituals is that they, they come from a heritage that regarded musicians and singers <coughs> to be healers. And the music itself was intended as a call out to the larger story in which every bit of suffering and oppression is held. And that larger story in African-American spirituals was calling out to the past, the present, the future. It was calling out to God and to the source of life and to the sources of healing. It was calling out to the ancestors, both those long dead and those just newly dead. And this song then was a calling out on behalf of those who were suffering for the presence of that healing spirit coming from all of life and coming to hold us and accompany us in our suffering, in our sorrows, also in our joys. So we'll sing four verses of this. I invite you to sing along if you want, and we'll announce the words as we go along. Good morning, David. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for joining me. Someone 
singing. Someone singing, Lord, Kumbaya. Someone singing, Lord, Kumbaya. Someone singing, Lord, Kumbaya. Some of the story behind that song is that Kumbaya is actually um, from the Gullah language, which is a mix of African and English languages that is still spoken today along the coasts of Georgia and South Carolina. And that song um, rose from, of course, the oppression of slavery and all of its aftermath. Um, but I encourage you to recover that song as a way of inviting the holy and all beings of the earth and of all time to accompany you in whatever the sorrows and joys of this time are for you. So we'll now extinguish our chalices. If you have one lit at home, I invite you to speak these words with me. Though we extinguish the light of the chalice here, we know that the light of truth and the warmth of love go with us in our hearts. Be well, friends. Take good care. <laughs>